everyone, today we're going to check out the Hoka 1-1 Speed Goat 5. This is a really awesome trail running shoe, but it also doubles as a fast and light hiker. It is our pick for the season for best trail runner that doubles as a fast and light hiker. <laughs> If you're new to the channel, my name's Roxy and I am part of the Adventure Junkies team. We help people like you choose the right gear to get outside. If you want to learn more, visit the website at theadventurejunkies.com. Now for what you really came for, the Hoka 1-1 Speed Goat 5. So if you are a fan of the Speed Goat 4, fear not, the Speed Goat 5 is just as loved. Uh, it, it retails for $155. It comes in sizes 5 through 12 and is available in a wide as well. This is the size nine of the Speed Goat women's. I wear a size nine, I ordered a size nine, it fits. There's only one color combination available, so they got really bold with this color combination. It is blue coral cam camellia. So on the box it just says BCCML, blue coral camellia. I hope I'm saying that right. If not, I apologize, but this is it. It is flashy. I actually really like it. It has like an ombre look to it, but you only get one pick. This is what you get. In terms of weight, the Speed Goat is a light shoe. I have my scale here today. It is supposedly half an ounce lighter than the Speed Goat 4. So I'll weigh both of these. We are at one pound, two ounces for size nine for the pair. And that is nine ounces for a singular shoe. So uh, they are light and they feel light on the foot. Uh, super breathable all around. Uh, so if you're looking for something that feels like a cloud, this could be the pick. So there's no waterproofing here. The focus is on breathability and uh, you can tell this is like a pretty see-through shoe. I can actually see the sun coming in through the shoe. Uh, so super breathable. This is actually primarily constructed from a recycled polyester. Polyester is normally something you like put wear as clothing. So that's how light it is. It is also primarily made of welding, which is what is saving a ton of weight, but uh, delamination could be a problem uh, over time. I have actually already scuffed this on a rock while testing. So here is uh, the scuff and then I can see where the fabric has been ripped as well. So that sort of gives me a clue that these are not going to stand up to heavy uh, rock, rough rock uh, trails. You're going to want to keep these on some lesser intense terrain. So in addition to the recycled polyester on the top, you do have a piece of rubber like material around the toes that is going to protect your toes a little bit. It is a little uh, squishy, but it will give you a little bit of protection if you are trail running or fast hiking on these trails that do have uh, some bigger rocks or stones that might hit your foot. Looking at the lacing system, it's a fairly simple lacing system. We do have one extra eyelet on here if you want to do some custom, la custom lacing techniques to like uh, avoid hot spots or alleviate hot spots. Uh, otherwise, pretty standard lacing. There is one loop on the tongue here that you can put the laces through to keep the tongue in place, which I find is actually very important because the tongue is so super thin. If you can see how thin that is. Uh, I found it really, really comfortable. It is partway gusseted, which means halfway down it is attached. Let's see if I can show it to you better. So halfway down there, it is attached. Uh, and <laughs> this attachment is also made of mesh, so you really got extra breathability going. I really like the tongue. The thing that bothered me was actually the back here. Uh, you have this harder piece coming up and it pushed into my ankle right at this point. So as I was hiking, I got a little bit of pressure on the back of my ankle, which you wouldn't expect with sort of this construction here but that was a hot spot for me. So the outsole is a Vibram Mega Grip and it is mega grippy. Uh, this did really well on almost all terrains. Uh, mud, packed dirt, scree, loose gravel. It really did uh, have some nice traction. The only issue would be getting 
uh, any of that terrain in the shoe because it is so breathable, all these tiny holes, and uh, it can come up and over the edge because it's a low top shoe. So it does really well uh, grip wise. Uh, but you do have to be careful about what terrain you are using the shoes in. I wouldn't really throw your approach shoes out yet. I wouldn't use these on aggressively technical terrain. They don't do great on like smearing on steep rock or something like that. And especially because your foot is so removed from the actual rock you're walking on because of this midsole. Uh, so super technical, I would stick to your approach shoes, but otherwise these are gonna have some great grip while you are moving quickly through the backcountry. So we can't talk about Hoka 11s without talking about this midsole. I mean, the midsole is pretty much half the shoe here. Uh, so it is made to feel super bouncy and it is. It has really like cloud-like feel as you are walking. Uh, the compression molded midsole provides a tremendous amount of cushion. And uh, if that's something you're into, then this is gonna be a great shoe for you. Uh, especially when you're running, you can feel sort of the energy bouncing back. So that is why it is a favorite among runners, uh, but it does work really well for fast hiking as well. This is a slightly redesigned midsole uh, for the Speedgoat 5, but uh, if you have the Speedgoat 4 or the Speedgoat EVO, uh, it's gonna be a very similar feel. They did not change much. Let's talk about the insole here. Take it out. It's actually pretty thin. And uh, why would you need anything extra if you have that massive midsole? <laughs> but you can remove it and put in your own insoles if that's something that you're interested in. Uh, otherwise, a pretty thin, thin insole and you're getting most of your support from this massive midsole. So now that we've covered the basics of construction, let's talk about fit and performance. And of course, this is mostly my opinion so if you disagree or you had a different experience with these shoes please leave a comment below i would love to hear from you i would love to hear about the different experiences and all of those watching trying to get information that'll be helpful for them as well so as we talked about this outsole this vibram mega grip outsole is pretty grippy i really found it did well on almost all terrain and especially going downhill which is not something you often find uh, in light hikers to have that nice confidence going downhill. Uh, so mostly, uh, almost all terrain, nice and grippy. I would say like slabby or super wet is when you would find the most problems with this type of uh, Vibra Mega Grip outsole. As we talked about, super breathable. Your foot will be <laughs> very happy in these shoes if you have a hot foot. Uh, this nice uh, fabric along the outside, super breathable all the way around. Uh, this swallowtail feature right here, covered in fabric, but not really my favorite. It did dig a little bit in here. It's a harder portion of the shoe, and I didn't find it to a leave when I'd worn it after a while. So it, it's not breaking in and disappearing. It still has that structure there uh, with that swallowtail coming off the end. It also made it a little hard to get like a really solid heel lock because you're missing the cupping on the outside, if that makes sense. Uh, but you could change around your lacing systems to sort of enforce that heel lock. But otherwise, not a huge fan of this swallowtail construction design. Although it did make them slipping on and off uh, easier. Your heel just sort of slips right in there. So that is nice if you're looking for uh, ease of getting them on and off. So overall flexibility, we've got some toe flexibility, some torsion. It's actually surprisingly flexible considering how massive this midsole is. So if you're looking for a little bit more movement under your foot, even though, don't be afraid of this like massive midsole, you'll still, still get a little bit of movement. Uh, I would say like a medium amount of um, it's like medium stiff is what I'm trying to say. Uh, the upper, this fabric upper, it's going to break in a little bit. It might get a little more loose as you wear it. And then you could just adjust the laces and it'll still fit. Uh, I wear a size nine, these are a size nine. I think they fit really well. Uh, the toe box is pretty standard, just a slight curve in on the upper toe. I like to have my toes splayed uh, while I am hiking. And I didn't feel like they were crowded in there at all. So some space but not as much space as you would see on like a minimalist hiker or um, a barefoot hiker like something like that support wise this shoe has a ton of support uh <laughs> this 
midsole that we've talked about a ton uh, offers a ton of support for the foot, but it doesn't offer a lot of stability. So if you're backpacking, uh, this is probably not a great shoe for you because it has so much cushion and give. It doesn't feel like you're like rock solid while you're moving slowly. It's more of like a bounce back effect. So if you're trail running or fast hiking, you get um, the stability through moving quickly through the backcountry. But if you have a heavy backpack on and you are walking slowly, uh, it's not gonna have the stability you need to carry that weight safely. Massive amounts of cushioning uh, on the midsole and none on top. It's just a really a thin piece of fabric, which is great for breathability. <laughs> I don't think if you are like climbing through jagged rocks, this is not your shoe because it's just, it's going to rip. It's like wearing a t-shirt on the top of your foot. <laughs> so you, you're not going to have a lot of protection there. There's a tiny bit of cushioning around your ankle here, but otherwise t-shirt. It's very thin, <laughs> breathable, but thin. So these shoes tend to run narrow. Uh, I found it to be somewhat narrow but more that it just like hugged my foot more which I liked because it countered the uh, cushion of the midsole to have this top feel more secure I expect it to stretch out as I continue wearing it but I will just adjust the laces from there otherwise I wouldn't say overly narrow uh, but not the definitely not considered a wide shoe there is a wide version so if you need that for your foot go ahead with the wide version. Overall construction and durability seem on par with, on par with Hoka 11's uh, line of shoes, which are high quality. Uh, I do see some issues moving forward with the durability using this around more intense terrain. I have already ripped a little hole here in the fabric and I can see that happening more often as I hike in them instead of doing just like quick packed dirt trail runs. Just a quick note before we finish up today, if you are finding this video review helpful, please like and share so more people like you can find it. So who is this boot for? This shoe for really? The Speedgoat 5 is for anyone who wants a crossover shoe that is doing a lot of trail running and also fast hiking. So if you want one shoe for both jobs, this is a great option. It's also a really good option for anyone that wants extra cushion while they are hiking. Uh, this midsole right here is really going to have your back, pun intended. You're, it's going to have your back and knees and, and ankles. <laughs> it's going to make it nice and cushy on you. Uh, so yeah, great for trail runners and fast hikers. Uh, I wouldn't say this is great for backpackers or for anyone who is trying to get up a 14er that has more aggressive terrain. It's going to lose its stability as you add weight onto your body. So if you're carrying a heavy pack, uh, because it's so cushy, it's going to feel not as stable as you're hiking. I really love that it's breathable, that it's uh, symbol to lace, that it feels like you're running fast hiking on a cloud when you are using it. Uh, I'm not so into the lack of durability in aggressive to more aggressive terrain and this weird swallowtail thing just not not for me uh it was a little uncomfortable if you enjoy this review please like and share it so more people like you can find it and if you have the speed goat fives from hoka 11 and i said something wrong or you disagreed or you agreed or you hate them or you love them please leave us a comment and let us know it really helps us make better videos and it helps anyone watching to get a better idea of the show so please go ahead and comment whatever you're feeling uh <laughs> it really helps us out also if you're looking to purchase the hoka 11 speed goat fives there are links below in the description heads up these are affiliate links so we do earn a small commission uh, at no price to you, but it just helps us to keep making videos like these. If you like this review, you'll definitely want to check out these reviews also. All right, and that's it. We will see you next time. Happy hiking.